nation states take fire sale attacks from fiction to reality. This is one that I, I, I think I started and I almost feel crazy for bringing up in the fact that I used to make so much fun of a fire sale. Do you know what a fire sale is, Mark? I, you know, from our discussions, I finally do, but I have to admit, I have not seen Die Hard he has 5 not or seen whatever. Live Free and Die Hard. Yeah, Come I'm on, sorry. guys. Forgive me. Go back and watch the whole Die Hard series, man. Uh, you have seen the first. I've seen the first one. It's my you, Christmas you movie. Like. Yeah. yeah. Which is crazy. You're right. It is a Christmas series. But <laughs> <laughs> anyways, in Live Free and Die Hard, what at the time seemed like the biggest kind of sci-fi, oh God, they've taken hacking too far from a nerd perspective, was a fire sale. And in that movie, a fire sale was essentially, it was a cyber attack, but they attacked three kind of verticals of, of basically our existence. I think they went after finance, they went after stock market trying to make our trust in economy and finance fail. They went after communications, telecommunications, and they went after, was it public utilities? Transportation. Transportation, yeah. Come so, on, man. I haven't even seen the movie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I wrote the prediction and I forgot. But the whole point was they go after three pretty core systems of any like you know country or state at once. But it was also kind of a smoke screen too. In some cases, their target was none of those. It was just to sow all this confusion so that when what they were really doing was trying to siphon billions of dollars or whatever, that would go sight unseen. And at the time, you know, it just seemed a little crazy, a little too sci-fi. But if you think about it, all these separate aspects of a fire sale are starting to happen. I mean, financial systems, SWIFT. I mean, we've watched attackers specifically target banking systems. They've started, SWIFT, by the way, is one of the transaction systems that banks have been using for decades. Uh, I think it started with maybe an Indian bank that uh, uh, was on Bangladesh. This, Bangladesh. Bank of Bangladesh, I think. Yeah, and they, they had a... Uh, they were on the same network as their neighbor company and no real firewall protecting their SWIFT system. Yikes. And the bad guys got into the bank and then they could fake a bunch of SWIFT transactions while still kind of lying into the logs so that it looked like everything was hunky-dory. So we, we've seen them do that. We've seen attackers kind of short stocks by sending spear phishing to key people at companies. Mm -hmm. So financial system attacks definitely exist. Uh, communications, uh, we just saw, I, I mean, I think you'll talk a lot about how communications can be mangled in another prediction, but uh, we've seen people, you know, knock down parts of the internet at certain times. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of propaganda using social media to sow a whole bunch of fake, you know, fake stuff that people believe. Say it. Say the fake word. News, fake right. news. I hate to <laughs> push something that some guy I don't agree with <laughs> made. <laughs> Sorry, no, but, just, it's fake news. Fake you can news. Say <laughs> <laughs> There's something called fact, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, it's it's pretty easy for them to poison our communication systems, take down our communication systems, and then as far as transportation, and let's let's add industrial control to that, turning utilities and lights off. While th there's definitely been some rumored attempts, I think uh, the Ukraine has had some power outages yeah. that were blamed on Russia. There's been some things that happened to the U.S. that haven't been fully attributed yet, but there's rumors that it happened. Our own FBI has warned us about the smart grid. There's airlines that have kind of lost their schedule due to some sort of uh, computer mishap. So I feel like as crazy and outlandish as it felt like in Die Hard 4 when I watched it, what was it in the 2010s or whatever, that all the pieces are really there. Are we not still in the 2010s? I, I guess we are in 2010. Okay. It was probably right around 2010. I okay. think the movie came out. <laughs> so 10 years ago or eight years ago or so, I, I think it's possible now. And it's kind of scary to think about. And as we watch, you know, some of the, the nation state escalations we talked about that Seems could like lead to a, a CN or, or to a, a UN treaty, this would be a good way to do a false flag attack to sow confusion when as a nation state you are trying to do something else. Yeah. It'll be interesting to watch for. Uh, what's our defensive tip for this one? Don't ride the bus? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I mean, really, I think what we want here is we want all these systems to really focus on cybersecurity. Uh, security and complexity don't go hand in hand. Uh, we see a lot of industrial control systems starting to do interesting, innovative things like the smart grid, like these mesh networks. Mm -hmm. We see what we call edge computing, where even the, the tiny little small processors that used to be part of these, these kind of 
operation technology edge are starting to get smarter. They're starting to put more memory and more compute power there because the cloud can't always keep up. And as we're doing this for innovation, I love innovation, I love some of this new technology. We really, as citizens, need to hold the people putting this technology out there to the grindstone to do security by design. You know, I don't want to slow down your innovation, but consider you know, what this could do if we don't think about it. And that goes for the same for financial systems, who I think for the most part are a little ahead of, of industrial control. You would hope so, but then again, we have banks that don't firewall yeah, off we their have that critical Bangladesh banking bank. infrastructure, so <laughs> who knows? Yeah. So I, I think we have to encourage a lot of the time, these are people, you know, we can't directly control, but we can vote with our, our pocketbook and and kind of uh, make sure the, the you know, and, people we go to are actually providing security in the products they give to us and you know services. How a lot of utilities have the, uh, you can buy green credits, yeah. pay extra money to uh, make sure your energy comes from solar power. Maybe we'll have like security, security credits. credits. <laughs> where you can make sure that your energy was generated securely. That would be a capitalist way to do it though. That, that's <laughs> essentially the company saying, all you people that can't afford it, you're on your own. If your power goes out from a cyber attack, too bad. Like I just gave Should have had more money, buddy. <laughs> it's a terrible idea. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I don't think it is. I mean, I essentially said the same thing by voting with our wallets, but ultimately we got to think about it. I hate the fact that security is always kind of this roadblock to innovation. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be that, but we need to find this happy medium of making sure we're not shooting ourselves in the foot 10 years later. Yeah, hopefully we don't.